Hi everyone, it's Michelle from HappyPinDesign.com. I want to quickly show you how you can automate resizing your photos for use in Canva or other places that need pictures resized. I even use this when I want photos for my blog posts. So this is just one way that you can do it using Photoshop. So the typical way that most people probably would resize a photo is possibly to go and use a photo editor like Paint. They would pull up Paint and then they would go to um, the resize right here and change pixels. So for instance, if you were going to change this for a pin for 1500 uh, by 1000, I think is the right size. Or if you were going to change it for your blog post, I always do 1600 by 160, but obviously this isn't working. So, um, this isn't the correct dimensions. Uh, so if you need to be really specific, this method that I'm going to show you probably isn't going to work, but if you just need it to be smaller because you don't want it to take up a ton of space on your website or you just need it to be smaller for your Pinterest templates. This is the method that I'm going to show you. So before I show you how I do this, I want to just quickly show you that I resized all 708 items of these photos that I got from Ivory Mix. So what I did was I picked, I selected uh, 1500 by 1000, but she creates photos in here for Instagram that are, I think, perfect squares. So that's not it. Um, I'm trying to find the one that, I'm trying to find one that, like, for instance, this is a perfect square. So I think, I believe this photo was maybe 5,000 by 5,000. And since I selected 1,500 by 1,000, it chose to resize it down to 1,000 by 1,000. Um, on this photo here, I wanted it to be below 1500, so it's 1000 by 1498. Tried to keep the dimensions, uh, maintain the aspect ratio without messing it up. So it's going to get it pretty close to what you ask, but if it's a perfect square, it might not, it might be sized down a little bit. So when you're in, when you pull up Pinterest, you don't even need to open you don't need to say create new or open or anything. You just go to file and then you go to scripts and then you go to image processor. But before I do that, I'm going to just select a small group of photos that I want to resize because I don't want to stay here for a while and do this. So I'm just going to say copy and Let's do stock photos, create a new folder, and I'll just call it test. Then I'm going to paste those in there. So you need to make sure that all the photos that you want to be resized are in a folder that you can navigate to. So I'm going to choose to resize these five photos. So you go in this first part. After you open the image processor, you see these numbers, one, two, and three. So we're going to go select the folder. We're going to go to stock photos where mine are located. And then click on that test button. And you're not going to see anything in here because they just want you to select the folder. And then you hit OK. Um, you can choose to open this first image to apply the settings. You can also include all subfolders if you wish. And then what I like to do is make sure that I keep my original. So um, I save the folder in the same location. Um, and then for file type, I always click JPEG and I choose the quality of 7, convert to sRGB. And then I resize it to fit. So let's say I want these to go on my blog. I'm going to select 1600 by 1060 as the ratio. Again, it might not be exact depending on the size of the photo. So once I do that, then I don't really need to mess 
around here with anything. Um, I'm just going to run it and it'll run really quickly and it won't take much time. So kind of just go through each photo and it resizes it one at a time, but it does it really quickly. And when it's done, you just get come back to the screen. It doesn't really tell you that it's done, but you know, cause it stops doing the little process thing. So, so if I go in here, you'll see this folder says JPEG and then you'll see my original photos. So now we have them all resized. So we have them resized down below 1600. So it tries to keep the one side the same. So it wants it to be 1060. So it resize the dimensions down to 707. If you don't like that, you could always pick a higher dimension for the second number. And um, if you want to keep the aspect ratio of the height and width different, you can mess around with the settings. But this is what it does if you would like to keep things in a lower dimension so you can upload them to your blog or to Pinterest or to Canva or whatever you're using. So I hope that's been helpful. It takes a really short amount of time. I ran through those 700 photos in about eight minutes. So if you're looking for a shortcut to how to automate your processes, this might be something that you might want to look into.